Great. All right, today we're going to talk about uh, World War II in the Americas, covering both the Pacific War in brief, but then uh, Truman's decision to drop the atomic bomb. So starting with the, the course of the war in the Pacific between the United States and Japan, we start with December 7th, 1941, and that attack on Pearl Harbor, which would lead to the American declaration of war against Japan. The United States and Britain, remember, uh, decided at the Washington Conference uh, later that month on a Europe first strategy that would focus our, our military attention on defeating Germany prior to Japan. However, American forces would be engaged with the Japanese Navy in two important battles in 1942. First, in May of 1942, at the Battle of Coral Sea, which goes down in history as the first naval battle between two navies that never actually came in contact with each other, um, except for using aircraft as spotters. So this was um, a, a battle waged by aircraft carrier forces. Um, the Americans defeated the Japanese and defended against a Japanese expansion to Australia. And then in the next month, the Battle of Midway Island, uh, June of 1942, um, where the Americans sunk four Japanese carriers, um, and that is considered to be that decisive turning point of the war in the Pacific, where from, from that point on, there will be no more expansion of the Japanese Empire. From there, uh, the United States will uh, go to battle on the ground, at, uh, a battle called Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands in August of 1942. This is the first land battle by the Americans against Japanese forces, and it begins the recapturing of territory from the Japanese Empire. Following this, the United States begins an island hopping campaign as they will have amphibious invasion after amphibious invasion on islands in the Pacific, getting closer and closer to mainland Japan, where bombing uh, uh, air attacks can be led against Japan. With the capture of Saipan in June, uh, pardon me, July of 1944 and Iwo Jima in March of 1945 and Okinawa in June of 1945, the United States could begin air raids of Japanese cities. And these air raids were absolutely devastating. For example, Operation Meeting House in March of 1945 would destroy upwards of 50% of the city of Tokyo and leading to the deaths of over 100,000, mostly Japanese civilians. Dozens of other Japanese cities were bombed in a similar method. The Japanese, however, refused to this point unconditional surrender. Now we're going to backtrack to the beginning of the war uh, and the start of the Manhattan Project, the United States project to develop an atomic bomb. In August of 1939, physicist Albert Einstein, who himself had escaped from Germany in the 1930s with the rise of the Nazis, had sent a letter to President Roosevelt on the research surrounding uh, work that physicists were doing with uh, splitting uranium atoms to create and release a tremendous amount of energy and how that research could lead to destructive bombs. This would push the United States to start funding its own research project towards the development of this kind of weapon. This is called the Manhattan Project, and it would be begun um, in 1940 to develop this weapon under the leadership of scientific, uh, under the scientific direction of J. Robert Oppenheimer. It was a massive program uh, to develop this weapon. Over 130,000 people were put to work across the United States at a number of different sites at, at a cost of over $2 billion or, or $30 billion today. By 1945, the United States successfully tested its first atomic weapon in the desert of New Mexico. This was called the Trinity Test, and the bomb exceeded all expectations. Truman was notified of the successful test when he was at the Potsdam Conference in Germany, and the Allies, uh, by Harry Truman, would issue what was known as the Potsdam Declaration to Japan knowing that he's got this weapon in his back pocket that called for immediate unconditional surrender from Japan or else Japan would suffer prompt and utter destruction. And though Truman did not let on that he had this weapon, he knew that he now had the device that could bring that destruction. So the options at Truman's hands, he could invade Japan 
with a planned operation called Downfall uh, as early as November of 1945. He could call for a uh, surrender on mutually agreeable terms. This would be a negotiated end. It's the opposite of an unconditional surrender. He could assume that Soviet entry into the war, which we knew was going to be coming in early August, would lead to a Japanese surrender. Truman could demonstrate the power of this new weapon over Tokyo Bay in hopes of leading to a surrender before it actually had to be used. Or he could use the bomb in hopes of immediately ending hostilities. Ultimately, he chose to use the bombs. On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped the first atomic bomb, codenamed Little Boy, on Hiroshima, Japan, a city that had previously been untouched by major bombing campaigns because the Americans wanted to have some cities in Japan where we could see what the devastation of the bombs would bring. Over 70,000 were killed in the attack, and many more would die later from injuries. Much of the city was leveled. Three days later, on August 9th, a second bomb was dropped, known as Fat Man, on the city of Nagasaki. Over 40,000 Japanese were killed in this second bomb. A third bomb was being prepared um, and, and was said to be ready by August 19th, but the first two bombs did bring the Japanese surrender on August 14th. So the, the debates over the droppings of the bomb, well, the orthodox or the conventional view of the dropping of the bomb is the bombs were needed to end the war. The Japanese had refused to surrender, despite already dozens of other cities being bombed with conventional and incendiary bombs. Secretary of War Henry Stimson uh, believed that the Japanese would refuse to surrender and that their army was large enough to continue fighting for another year. The use of atomic bombs, it was believed, would bring a quick end to the war and actually save lives on both sides, sparing possibly a quarter of a million American soldiers from an invasion of the Japanese mainland and saving countless Japanese civilians and soldiers. Recall that the Americans were already firebombing these cities and would have had to have an invasion of the mainland islands of Japan and how challenging that would have been considering how difficult attacks on places like Iwo Jima and Okinawa had already been. The revisionist views, however, dispute, dispute this. They say the United States did not need to drop the bombs to win the war. The Japanese would have surrendered without the bombs. A prolonged blockade of Japan would have crippled the Japanese war effort. That Japan had three million soldiers that were basically trapped in China and unable to join in any defense of the islands. Senior military commanders from all branches of the United States military opposed its use on the grounds that if the United States opened this Pandora's box of using the bomb, that it would cost America its moral high ground and would lead to future atomic attacks against the United States once other nations developed their own weapons. Some argue that the Americans dropped the bomb to intimidate the Soviet Union and or to keep them out of the war in the Pacific. A U.S. strategic bombing survey report would suggest that the Japanese were ready to surrender by November. Truman was engaging, some would argue, in atomic diplomacy against the Soviet Union, knowing that the Soviet Union was a rival and knowing already of the disputes in Europe, uh, the timeline of the droppings of the bomb supports this argument. The United States expected the entry of the Soviet Union into World War II on August 8th. The Americans dropped that first bomb two days before. This was a demonstration of power against the Soviet Union, and it had hoped to limit Soviet expansion in Asia as they were expanding in, in Europe. Others argue that the bombs were dropped to justify the expense of the military project of the Manhattan Project. Billions of dollars expended, hundreds of thousands of workers putting effort into it, and possibly nothing to show for it if the bombs were never used. The bombs 
could have been an, a, an avenging of the attack on Pearl Harbor and um, against the, the horrid treatment that American prisoners of war faced at the hands of the Japanese. Anti-Japanese racism in the United States might have also contributed to the droppings of the atomic bombs. Ultimately, the decision is yours to write about with whatever question you have that pops up, uh, but definitely bring up both arguments and take a particular stand uh, while you refute whatever arguments that you, um, that you aren't supporting. Good luck. Take care.